Also, it seems that ICR left out the little tidbit where it was the church which was claiming that the Earth was flat. The quality of the research at ICR is simply staggering. The real problem with Darwin's model of evolution is that Charles Darwin just failed to uncover the real evidence. Evidence that would have shown how wrong his ideas really were. Evidence that is surfacing every day. So what exactly did Charles Darwin write that divided the scientific world in 1859? In his book, Origin of the Species, he suggested that animals, including man, have all descended from a common ancestor, from simple marine organisms. Darwin wanted us to believe that simple organisms turned into fish, and then amphibians, part sea, part land animals, then reptiles, then mammals, primates, or apes, and finally humans. Basically, his theory was that man descended from a sludge pool over millions of years, and that our most recent ancestors are apes. And that flatly contradicts the Bible's account in Genesis, that each species, including humans, were created individually. Now, of course, evolutionary adaptation does occur within the same species. In other words, certain birds develop characteristics over time that help them adapt to their environment. As a brief aside to this blatant straw man argument, if the deity magically created all species as Miss Folger just claimed, why do we observe the emergence of new species? There's a certain amount of selection. Um, but you'll get variation. Finches that migrated to a, an island in the Galapagos uh, group uh, did vary and change. Um, but they're still finches. They, uh, you know, they, they got there as finches and they still are finches with variations. Actually, each island of the Glanthos has several species of finch. They are all descended from the same founding population. This observation also contradicts Miss Folger's prior claim. If you take two medium finches with medium-sized beaks and you breed them, you will get some finches with small beaks and some finches with larger beaks. Over time, as these finches spread out into the various environments, certain beak sizes would be favored in certain environments and therefore they would become the predominant type. But the point is, is the capability to produce the small beaks, the medium beaks, and the large beaks was already in the parent population of the Galapagos finches. And it was simply the environmental differences that allowed them to be expressed. It was not the creation of any new and unique information. Is everyone else tired of hearing the same old nonsense? Here's a quick look at some of Darwin's finches. Remember, ICR wants you to believe that that one founding population already contained all of these different finches. Again, our esteemed creationists have halted their research with the abstract of a single study. Over 20 years, scientists were able to observe and document changes in the beak size of Geospiza fortis. Much like Kettlewell's work, this study is but one string in a grand tapestry of research which creationists blatantly ignore. But cats don't become dogs, and apes don't become humans. Oddly enough, that non sequitur marks the end of the first segment of Miss Folger's argument. At best, she managed to weave together a rather obtuse semantic argument and a dishonest straw man against Dr. Kettlewell. These are the references. This is where we actually show you that we did the research for our slides. And, where, well, we also point out that Miss Folger, she didn't. She just made up nonsense.